And welcome back. Uh, Naomi, we're, uh, we've lost our commercial stations. We're still on the air with Free Speech TV, with, with all our Pacifica stations, with American Forces Radio all around the world. Um, and you're still with us, right? Absolutely. Okay, great. And then in four minutes, we'll rejoin our commercial stations and for the last, and then we'll take, you know, uh, wrap the show up. So I'll, you know, whatever we discuss, I'll try to summarize very quickly um, when we come back from the break for those people listening on the commercial stations. So what, you know, a lot of, a lot of the concepts that you and I have been discussing here and, and that are uh, in your book, uh, No Is Not Enough, um, almost sound, it, 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 they almost sound like abstractions, you know, it's, it, 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 let's make this, you, you started to make it real with the, with the uh, for example, I thought the climate stuff, you know, com at the community level, people should be controlling their own power and, or even at the, at the level of the individual home, but probably the community is more resilient um, as a way of doing that. Um, what are some of the other solutions that you're aware of or that you think that would be good and, and, and in terms of government policy, I mean, things like taxation, trade, mm -hmm. uh, immigration, uh, these, you know, some of these hot button issues that yeah. are out there. Well, trade, absolutely. I mean, one of the, um, one of the things that the uh, neo-fascist right is tapping into is that, uh, you know, free, free, the opposition to corporate trade is an issue that rightly belongs to the left, you know, and, and, and this used to be an issue that the left was very, very engaged in and, and that, that, you know, Parties like the Democratic Party and the Labor Party were originally opposed to these deals, right? Mm -hmm. But then ended up um, breaking their election promises and ratifying them. And um, the movement that I was a part of that sort of hit the world stage in Seattle in 1999 um, was an extremely progressive opposition to what some people called you know, corporate globalization, others called corporate rule. But at the center of it were you know, the World Trade Organization, uh, deals like NAFTA. Um, and, and seeing how our democracies were being eroded, how this was uh, causing a race to the bottom in labor standards, in environmental standards, that was a progressive movement. It was multi-sectoral. It was international. Um, but it was kind of shocked out of the way after September 11th. And, and you know, there, obviously there's lots of good people who continued to do great work on, on trade policy from a progressive perspective. Um, but there wasn't a mass movement. You well, know, it also and that got created a, a context where Trump could appropriate that issue. So we need to seize back trade as a progressive issue. Yeah, I, I, pardon my interrupting. I, I was going to say it, it got appropriated by Trump. <laughs> I mean, in fact, on this program, when he when he started going after trade, uh, you know, every, with the single exception of PNTR, Permanent Normal Trade Relations with China, every single free trade agreement has been majority opposed by Democrats in both the House and Senate and majority supported by Republicans in both the House and Senate. Yes, we had two Democratic presidents, Clinton and Obama, who wanted these free trade deals, but they were not in, in, in concert with their party. Mm -hmm. And, and when, when Trump uh, came out and said, you know, uh, free trade is crazy, uh, I, you know, I, on, the, on this program, I said, this, this guy's, you know, he's taking the Democratic Party's message and inserting it into the Republican Party. He is going to win the primary. And, and he did. This, this was a, this was a very popular message. And look, he, he ran an anti-neoliberal uh, 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 candidacy, right? And yeah. He talked about protecting the social safety net. Now, of course, he's betraying all of that. And I think it's such a wasted opportunity to see the Democrats focusing all of their energy on Comey and Russia, and you know how long he shook McCall's hand for, and all of yeah. this stuff that is not going to do anything but confirm this perception that this is about different teams. I'm with um, you. We're talking with Naomi Klein, author, activist, filmmaker. Her latest book, No Is Not Enough. The website, noisnotenough.org. You can tweet her at Naomi A. Klein. And Naomi, we were just uh, just talking during the break here about, about how Trump has... Ha, 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 the, the way that he won both the Republican primary and, I would assert, the White House was by saying... Uh, that he was the guy who was going to blow up neoliberalism. He was the guy who was going to blow up the free trade agreements. He was the guy who was going to start taxing the billionaires, you know, talking about the banksters as killers. Um, he was the guy who was going to make sure that your Social Security, your Medicare, and your Medicaid are never touched. Um, he was the guy who was, you know, and, and these, it turns out, were not only all wrong, but all just lies, but they're doing the exact opposite. Right, and which is why, you know, this is the conspiracy in plain sight. Look, I, you know, I think Trump should be investigated on all fronts. Go for it, right? But not to the exclusion 
of focusing on um, you know, the, the centerpiece of the betrayal and the one that I think is most likely to peel away those Trump voters that voted for Obama in 2012, that voted for Obama in 2008, and went Trump this time, right? Um, but there also has to be a credible messenger for, for that, um, somebody who is not seen as themselves being in bed with the billionaire class. Um, and, you know, and, and the Democrats didn't have that. And it's not clear that the Democrats won't make that mistake again. You know, they seem absolutely determined to repeat the same mistakes over and over. Um, you know, they think the lesson is, you know, how do we find our Macron, right? How do we find, right. you know, Hillary without the baggage? Um, and rather than how do we how do we find a true uh, economic populist that's going to be a credible messenger to speak to uh, working people uh, and not just the white working class, because their bigger issue was the fact that they were not able to galvanize their base and get their base out to vote, period. Right. Um, Hillary, you know, lost this election. Trump didn't win it. Uh, And they lost it with depressed voter turnout. So what is going to excite the base? Free public health care is going to excite the base. You know, Uh, free college tuition is going to excite the the base. A bold plan to get to 100 percent renewable energy in a way that is going to bring real justice uh, to communities of color is going to energize the base. And millions of jobs. And millions of jobs. We can create 10 times more jobs by investing in renewables, efficiency, public transit, than when we put those dollars into, say, the Dakota Access Pipeline. Right. So there's a, there's a very specific kind of prescriptive uh, path to this. Um, and is it really, Naomi, your sense that the Democratic Party is going to blow this? Because I'm, I'm getting a lot of very positive, I'm, I, you know, I, I get these people... Best. They will do their best, Tom. Um, but the real issue is whether there will be a successful insurgency within the party, like the one that was led by Jeremy Corbyn. And let's remember, it was bloody. I mean, Corbyn was opposed at, and sabotaged, viciously sabotaged at every turn oh, by yeah. his own party, right? Oh, yeah. um, and he managed to hold on to power, and then he managed to prove all the skeptics wrong uh, by winning back many seats. Um, you know, if he hadn't have been so consistently sabotaged, he might well have won the election and he may well win the next one. This is a very unstable government right now in the U.K. Um, so, you know, obviously there's a very active debate uh, among progressives and certainly at the People's Summit about whether it is worth staging that kind of insurgency within the Democratic Party or whether it's about forming a new political party. You know, I'm not taking a position on this, um, but, uh, but, but I would certainly uh, um, put my money on the fact that, that, that the established Democrats will do everything possible to block an insurgency. That doesn't mean they'll win. Um, and, uh, and really, we're just talking about taking the Democratic Party back to its FDR roots. Well, well, precisely. I mean, in many regards, that was really interesting about Corbyn. Um, you know, really, what he did was was bury the the Blairite project, right? right. The rebranding of the Labour Party as New Labour in the right. late nineteen nineties, where it became, you know, and I wrote this seventeen years ago in No Logo. It became a labour scented party instead of a party that was genuinely aligned with working people. But then you look at what Corbyn um, did with this campaign when when that Labour logo appeared at the end of. Yeah. Beautiful campaign ads. It meant what it used to mean. It there meant you go. Na- Naomi, to hang on just a second. Hartman program. Call 202-808-9925. Naomi Klein, thanks. I'm sorry we're hitting a hard break here. Thanks so much for being with us. Great Naomi. talking with you. Take care. Noisnotenough.org is the website for her book.